Okay, we've got all the guides roughly placed on the blank. Now, how did I determine where to put them? Honestly, it's a little bit of an experienced guest and it's also just what visually looks correct. Uh, you, you imagine this, I'm gonna exaggerate. You wouldn't put all 10 guides right here. You wouldn't put all 10 guides right here. You wouldn't put eight right here and two right here. They're relatively evenly spaced. However, there are two guides on here that aren't likely to move much. Let me make mention, by the way, I never actually measure the distance between each guides. It's fun for me making a custom rod to do it all by feel and touch. Uh, I don't measure anything with an actual ruler. So with that being said, the two guides that are least likely to move are the highest guide that's not the tip top and our first guide north of the real seat. Let me explain why. The highest guide that's not the tip top, in essence, is extra support for the tip. So I'm always gonna put it, what's that, three inches? Three, maybe four inches uh, from the tip. That's a given on any rod that I'm building, especially a casting or spinning rod like what we're doing, which is the majority of what I built. This guide's not going anywhere. Similarly, this guide. Imagine if the first guide off your real seat was halfway up the rod. That's a whole lot of space for line to be shaking back and forth, coming off the reel. It's not gonna be very efficient for your casting. Uh, and it's also likely to have a crossover where the line dips below the bend of the rod when you're actually hooked up with a fish. More about that in just a minute. I'm typically gonna put the first guide north of the reel seat about 18 inches or so uh, from the reel seat. Depending on the flex of the rod, I might move it a little bit, but more or less, uh, that's the position it's gonna be in, okay? And then from there, you just start putting them in seemingly correct increments uh, until you've got all your guides on the rod. How do you know how many guides to put on the rod, you might ask? Well, from experience, again, you'll sort of learn. The length of the rod is gonna play a factor in how many guides you need, as well as the flex of the rod. My principle is use as few guides as possible that allow you to have the line follow the blank when it's under stress without the line touching the rod. Let me say that again. Use as few guides as possible to allow the line coming off the reel to follow the flow of the rod without touching the rod when it's under stress or bending, AKA when you're hooked up with a big fish. So the next step in our process is to measure, if you will, the flex of the rod. There's a couple of ways you can do this. They make a tool that allows you to, or that helps you in this process. Uh, it's a device you set on the floor, for example, and you can put the butt of the rod into it and you're able to flex the rod that way. But we're doing a little bit more weekend warrior style. Uh, if you don't have that device, you're not completely out of luck. And with a little bit of practice and a little bit of dexterity, you can figure out the correct positioning. So what do we need to do? The first thing that we're gonna do is put our reel into our reel seat, just as if you were gonna go fishing. Okay, we've got a reel in our reel seat and I've already got a loop tied in the end of this line, which is important. And I'm gonna pull out about four arm lengths. And now we're literally gonna thread the line through the guides just as you would if you were ready to go fishing. Now what we're gonna do is double back this loop. We're gonna take our mixing stick and tighten that loop onto the stick. And then we're just gonna let that dangle. We're gonna come back over here and reel up our line until it's just at the end, not completely tight, but up against the tip top. So now becomes the homemade trick. Here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna place the butt of the reel on the ground. 
I'm gonna put my foot against the back side of the butt. I'm gonna place my left hand low on the rod blank because I want the rod to be able to flex as it naturally would. Then I'm gonna grab the tip top and what I'm doing is simultaneously I'm holding uh, my mixing stick in my hand so that I can place a little extra tension under the line if I need to. But I'm gonna take the tip top and I'm gonna bend it as if I had a fish on the line. And I'm gonna lower my left hand, by the way, just to make sure we get it in a good position where the rod's able to flex naturally. And I'm gonna bend it pretty significantly. And now I'm gonna look up and down the rod and what I'm looking for is any place where the line touches or even crosses the rod blank. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I'm going to point it out in just a second. Uh, just below the third guide down, we've got a spot where the line is in fact going below the rod blank itself. That's not good. That means if we're fighting a fish, that would be occurring and that's not what we want. We've got a couple other areas where it's close, but that's the only area it's actually touching. Okay, that tells me what we need to do. This is the position where the line was going below, below the rod blank under stress. The way that you lift the line up is to get these two guides closer to each other. Well, while we had it under stress, under bend, Right here was good, right here was good, right here was good. So we don't need to mess with those. And these areas were decent. There was a couple of them where the gap was uh, pretty favorable, I'd say. And so essentially what we're gonna do is move a few of these guides up. And ultimately we're decreasing the gap right here and then we'll retest. So I'm gonna put the rod back in the cradle I'm gonna come down to our problem area, if you wanna call it that, and we're just gonna slide it just a little bit. It really doesn't have to move much. We're gonna go half an inch maybe, just a little bit at a time. And then with the guides that are below it, we'll move them just ever so slightly as well. Okay. And there we go. We did pretty good on our first try there. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All of our guide spacings now are allowing the line to flow with the rod without touching it and definitely not crossing it over. This is what we like to see. This lets me know that we've got good guide positioning for our rod. So what I'll be doing now is taking our mixing stick out the line, reeling the line back up. We'll take our reel off the reel seat and we're ready to start wrapping guides. So that'll wrap it up for today's episode, learning how to place guides on our rod blank before we start wrapping. If you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the other videos in this series. We're gonna be doing a complete series from start to finish on how to build your very own custom fishing rod. Thanks again, we'll see you next time.